Hello everyone and welcome to my Brisbane meta preview video discussion. Um, now this is our first regionals coming up. Normally I'll have more information and more results to work off of. Usually I would look at something like League Cups and prepare you guys for what I think an accurate read of the metagame is going to be. But unfortunately, uh, we don't have any League Cups this season. So we're just going to have to make do with online results for the time being. And then obviously whatever happens in Brisbane, we'll analyze and move towards... Uh, Salt Lake City and whatever happens in Salt Lake plus Brisbane, we'll combine the two and look at Liverpool accordingly. And then from there, we'll prepare for EUIC, et cetera, et cetera. So if you guys enjoy this kind of content, obviously like, subscribe, um, leave a comment down below about what you're going to play if you go down to the tournament. Uh, or if you're undecided, just say undecided, which is fine, because I'm also undecided right now. But obviously, it goes without saying that I think Mu Max is going to be the biggest deck to beat. Um, it, is, it has almost a 20% meta share in any online event. A twenty percent meta share in a majority of events, and a lot of them do continue to perform. The better players with Movie Max are performing very well. Um, sure, there are Movie Max decks that are not doing well, but you need to have an answer going in. Going into a nine round regionals, we'll just assume that day two is a completely different tournament for the time being. Going into a nine round regionals uh, for Brisbane, sorry, it'll be an eight round top eight. So going into an eight round tournament where you can only afford one loss potentially to make top eight. Um, it might be seven. I don't know. If no shows happen, it'll probably be seven. So going into these like high pressure, high intensity situations where you can only really afford one loss in an entire tournament if you want to make top eight, if you want to go ahead and try to win the event, that means that you have to be prepared. Like there's a good chance that you could hit one, maybe two mews. You have to, like with a twenty percent meta share, you're almost guaranteed to hit a mu max. I'm not like saying um, like you will. Um, but there's a pretty good chance that you will hit at least one movie max in the day and there's probably a chance to hit more now regionals also have a kicker so with without having 200 players if you're only going for points with only 100 players at your regionals i think brisbane capped at 130 um i want to say i'm not entirely accurate on the information so top 32 will get 60 points um meaning if your goal is to get points to qualify for the world championship playing a consistent deck like movie max is an approach you could take. Sorry, I'm going to dial it back a second and go back to the points in the approach before we talk about decks. Now, heading into a regionals, a regional championship, you have to realistically set your goal. Am I going to win the tournament? Or, like, my goal is to win the tournament? My goal is to place, can, like, high up there and get a big finish? Is my placement to get a, you know, some championship points to work towards my overall goal of a world's invite? Or is my goal um, to, you know, go have fun, see what happens. It's my first time and set, realist, like, expectations realistically low. Like, am I going for a top eight? Am I going for just top 32 to get those points? Like, what is your goal? So based on that, you can already ascertain you need some certain number of wins. Like, for example, even in my friend group, I have someone who only needs a couple of points to rack up their final invite. So they're not going to play a high risk deck that would potentially, you know, go deep in the tournament. But they would rather play something safer and guarantee maybe five, like maybe going like five, three, one. Or in this Brisbane case, maybe like, I don't know, like four, two, one guaranteeing a top 32 slot then thus for guaranteeing like your 60 points which could propel you into that world championship invite so whatever your goal is heading into regionals make that very clear for yourself because if you get if you do better than your goal that's absolutely fantastic but you're going in with a goal and um, kind of set those expectations realistically as you go in um, for example for me i've already qualified for the world championships i have almost 900 championship almost a thousand championship points sorry so for me my goal is to obviously go and try to win regional championships but like i just said as an example one of my friends they are at like 440 points and the invite currently stands at 500 for us players so they are probably you know looking to get that last couple of points um and play a consistent deck if possible to just you know get some of those points so that being said um first and foremost all the decks i'm going to mention to counter and to play against and that kind of stuff this is the same advice i give to players that i coach players that i talk to on a day-to-day -day basis and play an advice that i take a lot of the time to myself Play what you're most confident in, even if it's not the best deck in format. If you know a deck inside and out, you have matchup knowledge that other players probably don't. Like, let's say you're someone who has been playing Victini VMAX for quite a while. I'm going to use this as an example. Um, don't take, like, this is just simply for an example's sake. It's just the first thing that came to mind. You know Victini VMAX's matchup knowledge better than somebody else. You know what you're doing in certain matchups that, you know, scenarios that other players would maybe flounder and not know what they're doing. So like, for example, tomorrow, if you were someone who was going to pick up Mew V Max and go into a tournament, yes, sometimes Mew runs itself. And yes, sometimes the hands happen perfectly, but there's going to be scenarios that you haven't occurred, uh, that haven't occurred for you. And if something like that happens, like you're probably going to get screwed over. 
Which brings me to my second deck to prepare for, Arceus Duraludon. Arceus Duraludon was piloted by Riley Holbert over at the uh, Full Group Games 2K, and it was taken to an excellent win. Now, I personally think while the deck is very cool, it takes a lot of players off guard. If you practice against Arceus Duraludon, it's not uh, a flashy deck, it's not a crazy deck, it does what it's supposed to do very consistently, and that's what the deck is all about. But if you're someone who plays against you know that matchup and know that matchup knowledge, you know that what they're going to do and what their like game plan is, what their like prize mapping is, all that kind of stuff. Now that leads into my third um, deck to watch out for, which I don't know if this will actually happen to be big, um, because the win percentage for this deck is like horrendous compared to its like meta share online, which is single strike Gengar. Um, I don't know if players just favor it online because. It has like an easy to access deck pool or what, but I don't think the deck is very good, but it is a deck to watch out for if you are like looking at the board. Uh, a fourth deck to look for, obviously, is our two single prize decks. Fourth and fifth will be our two single prize decks to prepare for, Rapid Strike, Malamar, and Durant. Now, Durant is the flavor of the month style deck. It has been doing very well in the online circuit. It has won a couple of big tournaments. Therefore, players are going to pick it up and take it because players like to do that. Players are creatures of habit. Players like to see what's shiny, what's new, what's different. And they see, oh, this guy beat a lot of Mew Max players. Now, the matchup... Again, this is where matchup knowledge comes into hand. Durant will beat players that don't have matchup knowledge. And you can assume comfortably that out of these players coming to regionals, there's probably a good handful of them. I would say probably 20%. Um, and that might be like a generous number that have not played on these online tournaments, that are not playing like to the quote-unquote meta. They are playing what they want to play. Like, these are players who are, will bring the same deck no matter what today, tomorrow, next format, last format. Like, these are players who are confident in that deck and their matchup knowledge. And that's where, like, your players, like the Durant players come into play. They're not picking it up as a flavor of the month. These are There are players who have been playing this for quite a while, and this is their time to, like, shine kind of deal. Um, but if you know the matchup knowledge, and now it's out there, practice against it, you get a better understanding of it. Yeah. Uh, and a deck that I almost forgot about, but I'm going to encompass, like, a lot of things into one, is Arceus Variants. Now, RCS variants are going to be very popular, and RCS variants are going to be very, very strong. Um, so knowing what your RCS variants you're up against in a, in a best of three closed deckless meta is going to be hard, because RCS decks have Starbirth, which is, they can play anything they want in a closed metagame uh, with a closed deckless metagame. So you can expect some surprises, some techs that you might not expect in the online circuit, some combos that are you know a little bit less um, likely to work. Um online or like less likely to work in general but if they can pull that combo off one time uh, all of a sudden you're cooked kind of deal like for example when i played at the world championships in 2019 i played greens uh, greens rushes are a very similar vein to playing um rc style decks because you can search your deck for any two cards uh, for me it was items and so i played a fighting dojo and a fighting energy to take decks off by guard and you know all it takes is one game that you need to steal off a bad matchup and one game where they break and all of a sudden you've beaten your bad matchup 2-1 so be prepared for some random shit to be in RCS style decks. Oops, I cursed. I did not mean to do that. I'm so sorry. Um, be, be prepared for random stuff to be in RCS style decks um, and players to be trying out unorthodox combos that may or may not work. Uh, Jolteon and Urshifu are both not dead. If you choose to not respect them, that is your call going in. I'm sure there are players who are both who are diehard on both Jolteon and Urshifu, and they will come in strong and they will come in hard. And if you are not playing Manaphy, there's a pretty good chance they can punish you. But if you, again, once again, have the matchup knowledge and know how to play against the matchup, you might not need it. Um, I think Ice Rider is probably the last deck to round out, like, the big decks that I want to talk about. Um, like, Ice Rider is probably the deck that, like, I would say, like, Ice Rider RCS, Ice Rider Suicune, like, whatever. Like, Ice Rider as a whole uh, got a big boost from the set with Choice Belt. And so coming off the back of that, we could definitely see a lot of Ice Rider doing well, performing well. Um, yeah, uh, so Brisbane will be a very small tournament. And keep in mind, going into best of three. Uh, we're going to shift the conversation now from decks to best of threes. You can please feel free to ask deck questions. Don't ask deck specific questions like, here's my deck list, help me critique it, because that's not what I'm going to do for you here. I really apologize. But if you're like, do you think this is a good matchup into this? I will answer you wholeheartedly in the comments. Um, and if you ask those questions on stream, I will talk to you about it in depth if I can. Uh, but going into best of three timers, keep in mind for a tournament like Brisbane, you can only afford to lose once. Meaning, I don't know how many ties that means. You can maybe get, like, if you tie twice, I think it's equivalent to losing once at that point. Because if you go 4-1-2 or like 5-1-2, you're not making top cut anyway. So you you can afford to tie once and lose once total. So keep that in mind when you're playing a best of three 50 minutes. And keep that in mind when you're choosing your deck for the tournament. Because choosing your deck for the tournament, being comfortable with the deck and knowing your time limitations is very, very important. Because taking ties that could have been wins 
is really, really unfortunate. Like, that is two match points down the drain. That could be your make or break point in that tournament. Um, taking ties where it could have been a loss, absolutely fine. We're taking them out to the bank. That's like, holy moly, we got lucky here. We took a match point where we shouldn't have taken one. But taking a tie where you should have taken a win is a really be feels bad. So you got to be able to play fast. You got to be able to understand the scopes of your deck. And knowing when to concede and knowing when not to concede is huge. So that being said, going to Brisbane, top three decks to counter. RCS variants, Movie Max, and uh, let's say... I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna put my money on Signal Prize Dark being very prevalent. So those are the three big decks that are going to be big, uh, and then we'll see how the meta shakes up. We'll do an analysis coming back on this on Monday or Tuesday or whenever the data is out. We'll come back, sit down, reevaluate how we looked at it, and then we'll prepare for Salt Lake City. So hopefully you guys can stick with me until then. If you're going to Brisbane, good luck. Uh, best of luck. Let me know how you guys do. Um, I'd love to hear about your tournament run, and uh, we'll we'll talk before Salt Lake. All right, bye guys.